Hey everybody, Coaster Brian here. Today we're going to take a look at another Hot Toys figure review. This one of the kind of famous, the uh, DX10. This is, as you can see here, the T2 Terminator 2 T800 DX release. This is of the kind of Cyberdyne uh, moment in the film. As you can see on the box, T2 T800 DX10. It's kind of a it's not really a leather, but it has that kind of a finish. It's, it's not like a cardboard. It definitely feels like maybe his jacket, something like that. And this is a very big box along the side. This T800, once again, DX10. On the back, the usual kind of information you would see from Hot Toys. Uh, being that this is a bigger box, I'm going to lay this down on my table this time. Uh, this is does have a flap to open it is magnetic it's a very good box very sturdy box will protect the figure so like uh dx releases there's usually a little bit more uh theming or more kind of detail in the packaging for the figure so right when you open the box on the very left side on the inside of the flap it says i know i now know why you cry but it's something i can never do right a quote from the film here it says the T2, kind of the Cyberdyne symbol. Uh, one cool thing is uh, these can separate when you open them up. It shows the, I believe this is the prototype, a picture of the prototype head sculpt. That, I, to me, it looks a little bit different than the actual final result of the figure, but it reminds me of the prototype pictures that you'll see online. But again, usually uh, for the DX releases on this styrofoam cover, they do some kind of a theming or some kind of a bonus item uh, on here. So when you lift this off, this would be where the figure would be. Some information about the head sculpt here and the body. Uh, just some of the features that it has and some of the credits for the people that painted or sculpted the figure itself. Uh, when you release this, more styrofoam. Some of the accessories here. We'll take a look at that later. You can pull this out. And then the last bit of accessories. But don't worry, we'll get a closer look at these in just a moment. So sit back and let's take a look. Okay, so right in front of you here are all the accessories for the DX10. Uh, there is definitely a lot of pieces here. Uh, we'll take a very in-depth look at them all. But first, before we do, as always, when you get a Hot Toys figure or any figure for that matter, if it has a user guide or instructions on how to use, definitely take a look. Now with this figure, there are these two pieces. Um, here, it's just giving you some information very quickly about the leather material. So one thing I will touch upon is how this material, this figure does have leather, genuine leather, uh, but that's what that is for. Uh, also, sorry for any loud noises. It's, it's a bit windy here today, so you may hear some noises. I apologize. Uh, but this is the user guide. So very quickly, again, it just gives you some information about the figure and how to use some of the functions, which I will also touch upon in this video, but just going through very quickly. Again, it's always very important to make sure, you know, you spend a lot of money on these figures. Make sure you don't want to break them. So for this one, it has all of that information. And then here for in Japanese, this is the Japanese version of the figure. Um, I don't know if the US releases or any other releases will have this, but I do require this uh, second hand in Japan. So that is why. All right. Looking very quickly, we see there's a lot of guns, some hands, some other smaller accessories. Let's start with some of the big stuff first. We'll start with the figure stand. So here, I have the protective plastic cover on it still, um, but it does say Terminator 2 T800. This is kind of a Cyberdyne um, design on the figure. It's a flat plastic. It's glossy. Uh, it is a crotch grabber, a really good one too. Very smooth. Works very, very well. Uh, one great thing about this is that it actually does light up on the bottom. You have the switch up oh, on the bottom on the side right here. You hit on and you see just right here. This is where the, the light is, nice and bright, nice and easy to see. It does bleed a little bit throughout the rest, but the main uh, focus is on basically the name uh, on the stand. Next, let's take a look at the hands right here. So on the figure, there is uh, two hands already. Uh, you see here we have two ungloved hands. 
Uh, for this figure, uh, at the beginning of the video, I said it's really designed around the Cyberdyne portion of the film, hence the minigun and everything. But we do have some accessories here um, that are best to represent uh, during the film when uh, John and Sarah Connor are modifying his chip uh, in his head. So that is before, during that part, he didn't do his thing with his arm yet. So that's why we still have some uh, ungloved hands here. And we have a trigger hand. And this is kind of a grasping hand, more than likely for the shotgun or the grenade launcher if you wanted to use. Great paint. Again, this is an eight-year-old eight figure, um, but the paint apps still really hold up to today's standards. These are great. And then we have the gloved hands more of our relax some of these can be used um for i believe this is the one you're going to want to use for the minigun uh but again this is a relaxed hand here now these hands it's the glove detail paint apps are great sculpt is great now these are a bit more uh they're not as bendy compared to the normal flesh hands so when you're trying to put these around any guns it does have some flex but it's not as giving as these are. So if you do have a hard time, I definitely recommend heating these up a little bit before you try to put any uh, accessories within these hands. And then two fisted hands here. On the figure, I have a trigger hand and kind of a uh, relaxed gun holding hand you'll see soon. Again, very good detail. All right, next let's take a look at some of the weaponry. Uh, here we have the pistol. Some really good paint. This does move. You can see through here. This does move as well. And the magazine does come out. There we go. With the bullet detail. So very great piece. Next we have his shotgun. The very, I think the very iconic shotgun in the film. This is all plastic. The wood detail is okay. I wouldn't say it's really realistic looking i think it does the job for what it is but um i think it's not really the best but you still have some of that paint wear on the gun it definitely looks metal but again it's all plastic has that kind of mechanism for the gun itself which is very cool just like you saw in the film here we have the grenade launcher Again, same thing with the wood. It, it's, I think it does the job, but I, I wouldn't say it looks realistic. Uh, the metal paint apps, again, that wear, that shine, it definitely looks metal, but it's not. Really cool. This does move. Uh, you can turn this. Be very careful. It's really, really thin plastic here. If you try to turn too hard, it may snap, but it does hold down the kind of chamber and with this his uh, bandolier with all the grenades this is metal on here uh, with all these grenades you can take a grenade out and you can put it in the gun and close it and you can kind of hear it in there it won't fall out uh, it stays up in this area but very easy to come back out as you can see so I'll leave those there. And just to show the grenade detail. Again, these are plastic. Really nice, nice shine, nice paint. And you get many grenades, as you can see. It fills it, fills the whole bandolier completely. So that's great. Uh, next, with the minigun, maybe the, the main uh, accessory in this set. Uh, first, that kind of coincides with it, is this bag, this duffel bag. All soft goods, uh, some of the metal buckles. Uh, this is going to be used in conjunction with this. If you remember in the film, he kind of had all the ammo stuff in the bag. So you're able to open it up. The uh, the zipper is kind of small. It's kind of, it's a little difficult to open. If you kind of push with your fingernail, you'll kind of move it along and get it going. But you can stuff this inside the bag and have this coming out. This is a rubber. This, of course, is the ammo for the minigun. But it's all rubber, very flexible rubber, as you can see. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it being so rigid when you're posing. Uh, on this side here, you see there's two holes. On the minigun, 
right here, there are two posts and that's where it would plug in just like so. Uh, I don't remember. You want to go this way. You want it this way down. That's the way it's meant to go. But there you go. You plug it in. You put it in the bag just like that. And just to show the mini gun, it's a really big piece, as you can see, uh, the scale of it. Paint apps, the wear, the metal look, it's fantastic. The wiring on the back, it doesn't articulate, doesn't move. Uh, there's not really any articulating pieces on this. Uh, the, the handle, the trigger, is a kind of separate piece that's on it. So it does flex a little bit. Be careful if you're too hard with this, it may snap off. But overall, this is a great iconic weapon from the film. All right, last kind of this stuff here. Uh, well, we do have some extra wrist pegs here. These are the accessories from that scene when they are changing the chip. Uh, very quickly, this is his iconic glasses. They fit very well, nice and reflective. We'll see them on the figure in a little bit. You have these pliers here. These are metal. Uh, the bottom is painted on the metal, but it's all metal. It's really, really nice. Here we have kind of the the chamber that the uh, the chip goes into, I believe, or the cover. I don't remember the exact details, but this this piece can actually go inside the head sculpt. I'll show you that soon. This is also the kind of cover for the chamber in the kind of skull of the endoskeleton. It has that blood paint on it. Really cool. These are plastic. You have the hair flap. Really nice kind of gory paint sculpt on the bottom. Makes it definitely look a bit realistic. And it has that tab right here on the bottom right here. So it kind of can sit and rest inside of the head sculpt like it's open. And last, the very small piece, uh, there is the, I guess the CPU from the, uh, from the uh, T-800. Just like in the film, I think this is the best they could do for such a small scale. Uh, you can definitely lose this very easily, so be careful. But there's that. All right, so now next, let's just pan up and let's take a look at the figure. So again, I have the two hands on here, the trigger and the kind of resting hand. Um, but just coming in real quick. Here we go. So now here is the T-800. Again, this is the Cyberdyne kind. Uh, before he got all battle damaged in the film. Giving a quick scan. So like I said, this jacket and these pants are genuine leather. They're real leather. Um, unlike a lot of the uh, Hot Toys figures before this and after that have used a uh, fake fox leather pleather. Um, this is real leather. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, before we do anything else, let's just quickly put these glasses on. There we go. So I don't know about you, but... This looks spot on to me. I love this head sculpt on this figure. Uh, there's been, there's a little bit of uh, back and forth with the quality of this head sculpt. I think it looks a lot better with the glasses. Uh, without the glasses, uh, there's some things, some good points, some bad points, but I overall, this looks like Arnold to me, uh, no doubt. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But taking these glasses off again, they slide on very easily. Just to show you some effects that you can do with the head sculpt. As you can see with the eyes, if you look, remember in the instruction manual, it has the parallel eye system. You can see here with the hair, this back piece comes off. It's on a magnet. goes on very easily. comes off very easily. You have this post. This one post, if you move this, it'll move the eyes together uh, in whatever direction you want. So compared to the separate eye system where you have to move them individually, with this one, you don't have to worry so much about some of the eyes being individually off from another. Very simple to use, very easy. You just move this around, 
and you can get the look you want. So the unfortunate thing with the eye system sometimes, which is one of the bad points to me with this head sculpt, is that the eyes kind of look a bit too set back in the head. Uh, maybe it's not as much of a natural look. Uh, they do the head, the eyes do a little, look a little bit too deep in the head, but still to me, I think this looks fantastic. The paint apps on the head sculpt are great. The blemishes, the wrinkling. Uh, one thing people do say about this head sculpt is that maybe it looks a little too young for Arnold in T2. Again, in my opinion, I think it still looks great. Uh, but when you compare it to the previous T800 release, uh, there's some good points and some bad points between the two. Uh, but overall, I still think this is great. Uh, before we move on, again, from the head, you can do that stuff with the chips. Now, if you can, as you can see, maybe it's hard to tell how do you do that. Well, right here, this piece comes out. Luckily for me, and it's, it's hit and miss with some people, this piece can be very easily to kind of fall out. Maybe it doesn't grip well on the head, uh, but for me it does. And it just kind of fits in, it pegs in, kind of, into that hole right there. And again, as you can see, mine's empty. Uh, it actually has on the inside, it has the detail. You may not be able to see it, but that rectangle inside, that's actually supposed to be like, I guess, the chip the CPU kind of set in maybe or the connecting port but again this piece here it can go in uh, working with the camera yeah, there we go it can go in as you can see uh, you can put this cover on it this little cover piece you can put on sorry about the focus um, and you can put the as you right here you see that kind of rectangle that is where you would put that peg into the head. Just doing it off camera very quickly. It's very difficult to maneuver around, but as you can see, it fits in pretty good. It's not really moving that much. And you can, if you wanted to uh, recreate that scene, you can. So that comes right out very easily. And then of course I can just pop out the chip. All right. Now let's just put the hair back on, but I mean, actually before we do, again, those effects, that paint effects, that endoskeleton effects, the paint, it looks great. Just put that back on. There we go. So moving down, looking at the clothing. Again, this jacket is genuine leather. Excuse me, this jacket is genuine leather. Now this belt and this belt here i'm not sure if this is pleather or genuine leather actually i think this one i know definitely is not real leather this is this is that pleather that fake fox leather this i'm not sure um but the pants these are leather as well uh you as you can see already i guess these hoops on the pants are fox leather or maybe they're just really wearing out as genuine leather but they do have wear uh this figure, again, is an eight-year-old figure. Japan isn't the greatest with their climate and humidity. Overall, I think this figure, as you can see by the belt, still looks pretty good. But bear that in mind, if you are going to be getting this figure secondhand, or even brand new, uh, temperature really does play a toll on some of these figures with the fake leather. Uh, so definitely take a look at that. But you can see here. They're kind of wearing out a bit, but it's okay. Belt still looks good, but this is, a, this is very common to be wearing out. But the pants itself uh the jacket is all real leather and i'll talk about more of that in a second there's the back there's the pants and then the boots and you can see the boots do go up here you can kind of see that in the shape through the pants and then the boots itself great paint apps all around it does look very realistic you have the zippers now to cover some of the articulation, starting at the head, uh, it is on a, a, a ball joint, but this neck is very thick. It's a rubbery, this upper body is pretty, it's like a rubber kind of overlay on the body, but it's not the best. It doesn't give you a lot of range of motion, but I think that kind of translates very well. It is a T800. Um, it's pretty rigid, doesn't have a lot of flexibility, so I think it kind of works for the posing you need for this figure. Not much rocking, but side to side is pretty good. The back, not much, uh, yeah, not much going back. 
not much going forward. So really just your left to right. Uh, you do have some upper body, pretty pretty good, I think, for the T800. A good crunch right there. Going back, it's kind of restricted just by the shirt, but about that much back. Again, that this is your natural. That's how much back. Uh, it does have some waist. I remember eight-year-old figure of the bodies. Maybe good, may not be. How long they've lasted. Uh, the arms. I mean, you can probably even go a little bit higher, yeah. Arm articulation is very good up and down. Front and back, you're restricted by the jacket. And again, this is a leather. Uh, I can get a pretty deep articulation, as you can see. I can get pretty high. The, the real leather, it does work with you pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, but sometimes it can be restrictive. Um, one thing is really the elbows. Uh, that's as far as I can go with the elbows. Also, to touch on the leather, I've had this figure posed uh, like this with the grenade launcher, the arm bent for months. And today is the first time I've actually undid the uh, the elbow. And the, the pleather jacket, the pleather, I'm sorry, the leather jacket, it keeps its wrinkles in the arms. It's, it's pretty tight. I'm trying to move the, the sleeve of the jacket down. It's really tight. Um, you may have some bunching up along the knees in the pants and the elbows on the jacket, but material wise, you can see there's no flaking. It's still holding up very good. Uh, the shine on this side of the jacket is a lot less than this side. Uh, I'm not sure why it just does feel smoother. Um, it feels a little cooler on this side. This side feels pretty dry. Um, so maybe I have to start being a little bit more worried about that side, but uh, the wrists, because of these hands, uh, they have that kind of flaring on the base of the glove. So sometimes you, you can be a little bit difficult to move, but you can. Uh, also, when you change out these hands, um, it's a bit frustrating sometimes because this leather jacket is so thick with the stitching here. Getting those hands in is a bit tough. But articulation-wise, you get a lot of good articulation. That front, again, articulation you get what you need for the posing. Oh, there goes the hair piece, as I mentioned. Uh, so be careful with that. Um, now with the pants, again, you're working with that leather, so it's a bit restrictive. Uh, that's as high as I wanna go. As you can see, not much. I don't know if you can recreate that scene where he's standing on one leg that well, because that would be it. <laughs> not really that dynamic. Uh, the side to side, uh, not so bad. Again, the leather, uh, but you know, again, it's a T800. Uh, even the knees, uh, they are double jointed, but the leather, again, you can see how tight that's getting on the front and the kind of wrinkles it will leave back. You can play with the leather, bring it back down, but kind of restrictive. The boots, uh, there is a swivel. Uh, there is an upper thigh swivel. Uh, the boots do swivel as well, but because the boot does carry up to here, your articulation forward and back, as you can see, is restricted by the pants. There is side to side on the ball down here, but again, restricted by the pants because of the boot. So you're not going to get much articulation uh, out of the, uh, the feet, the ankles, but again, it's a T800. I don't know if you're going to need that. So overall, that is the figure. So I think for this release, this DX10, uh, I think is, I know is one of the more iconic, well-known figures within the Terminator line, within the Hot Toys line. So I definitely recommend this figure. I think it's great. Um, I, I think the head sculpt looks great. Um, I like that it has the real leather. I don't have to worry so much compared to some of the pleather figures. Um, but for this one, uh, yeah, I love this figure a lot. It's definitely permanent in my collection. So thank you very much for watching. I'll be coming out with some more Hot Toys uh, figure reviews, some old, some new. Again, please leave a like. Please leave a comment. Please subscribe if you can. Uh, and please leave me, uh, let me know what other figures you'd want to see in the future. So thank you very much. Again, this is Coaster Brian. And I will see you next time. So bye-bye.